Well, good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning, good morning. My name is Minister John Pickens with Revelational Ministries, and I would like to thank all of you for joining me on this Sunday morning for the Word of God. Bless his holy name today. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. The Bible says, let everything that had breath Praise ye the Lord, for his praise shall continually, continually be in all of our mouths today. Amen. Everything, brothers and sisters, let everything that had breath praise ye the Lord. You may not feel like praising the Lord today. You may not think you have anything to praise the Lord for, uh, but you do, brothers and sisters. And I can assure you today, as every day, is an opportunity to give God the full praise and honor and glory that he and only he so richly deserves, not the people that we see on television but certainly not ourselves. Yes, man, many, many of you may have entered into something promising, but that, amen, the glory for it and the reward for it belongs to the Lord, the Most High. Bless his holy name today. Uh, before we go any further, brothers and sisters, with today's word, I have to first always start by giving honor to God uh, and my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for saving me from my sins and commissioning me, commissioning me, brothers and sisters, to preach the good news, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ, to his people all around the world. Bless his holy name today. If you cannot hear, brothers and sisters, if the sound is not clear, please uh, let us know down in the comment section and we will get everything fixed on this end. Thank you again for joining us today. Bless his holy name today. Amen. Uh, let us remember, brothers and sisters, to keep each other in our prayers. We are almost close to closing out this year. Just a couple weeks away before we enter the year 2024. Now, it's hard to believe, but... This year has gone by incredibly fast and it has been filled as every year with ups and downs. And although we have just two weeks to go, uh, we should not be in any hurry, amen, to rush through this year uh, because there is much still happening, much still to do. Bless his holy name today. All of you, amen, who are preparing for the holidays, amen. Blessings to you from Revelational Ministries. Regardless of the holidays uh, that you, amen, are maybe practicing in your household, uh, the reality is, brothers and sisters, every holiday is an opportunity. Every day is an opportunity to not only give thanks for one another, but most of all, to give thanks to the Lord, the Most High. And we do that by honoring him, by seeking him first, seeking his word and following his command, which is to love him first and then to love ye one another. Bless his holy name today. Now, let us go directly to the word of God. Amen. Let us go directly to the word of God. We're going to continue. Amen. On this theme. Amen. Of reconciliation. So today's scripture and text will be coming from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 12 through 21. That's the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 12 through 21. Amen. I will be reading from the New King James Version, or whatever you version you have available to you, amen, uh, will absolutely be fine because, brothers and sisters, the word of God is the word of God. There is no need to get into any of these debates about which version is the right version, amen. The correct version is every word that comes from his mouth. Bless his holy name today. So verse 12 says, for we do not condemn uh, or we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. Or if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus. That if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, anyone. He is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed us to the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. For he who made him knew no sin to be sin for us, 
so that we may become the righteousness of God in him. May the Lord bless both the hearers and doers of his word. That's again, the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 12 through 21. Amen. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you this morning, Heavenly Father, to tell you thank you. Uh, we tell you thank you, Heavenly Father, because you and only you are responsible for each of us being here today. You and only you, Heavenly Father, are responsible for protecting us from all hurt, harm, and danger, both the seen and the unseen. And only you, Heavenly Father, are responsible, amen, as to why we have an opportunity to inherit eternal life. Because it is the sacrifice that you gave, amen, through your son, Jesus, uh, on our behalf, amen, so that we might be saved if we believe, amen, this morning. And we thank you today, Heavenly Father, for this word. Uh, this manna from heaven, let it bestow down upon each and every single one of us uh, to go ahead and continue to nurture us, amen, and empower us to do your will in all of our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray today, amen, amen, and amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you, amen, all of you for joining me, amen, for the word of God this morning. Let us keep each other in our prayers for healing. Uh, there are many, many of us, brothers and sisters, uh, in our families who absolutely need all of our prayers and support for healing this morning. Bless his holy name today. In that spirit of healing, amen, oftentimes, brothers and sisters, in order for us to be healed from certain things, we have to go to the root cause. Uh, sometimes the root causes of things that we have done in our life. Uh, sometimes the Bible uh, will tell us, yes, the wages of sin is death, amen. Oftentimes we are paying for things uh, that we have done. But sometimes, brothers and sisters, we are dealing with things in our life. We have to be real about this, that things we had no uh, fault over, we had no control over. Uh, various abuses, things that may have been perpetrated on people, uh, all sorts of offensive things that are happening in our society, amen, violence, racism, genderism, all the various wars, brothers and sisters, that you see being manifested on the physical side are really things that are happening on the spiritual level. Now, on the spiritual level, the word of God tells us that we have to have a relationship uh, with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen, to the Father. Now, that's not going to happen on the physical side because God is spirit, brothers and sisters, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So how are we going to begin this relationship, brothers and sisters? How are we going to uh, mend our relationship with God? Because the reality is we have to understand this. Mankind has fallen, brothers and sisters. Uh, that is very clear. If you don't believe me, just simply turn on the news. If that's not enough, Go grab your nearest history book and you can see every single era, brothers and sisters, since time began. Amen. There have been wars and rumors of wars. Uh, many people want to get political with this uh, philosophy, brothers and sisters, and only attack the United States or only attack uh, various other countries. But brothers and sisters, mankind has been at war, amen, since the beginning of time, not simply at war with one another. Mankind has been at war, brothers and sisters, with God. Amen. Yes, we have been in a rebellious state since our inception, since the Garden of Eden. Amen. We have wanted our way. Um, how many of us have ever been around children? Of course, you're all of us. Uh, whether you have children of your own or you work as a teacher or a babysitter. Uh, what does a two-year-old want? Amen. They cry. They scream just as, as, as we all have at one point because we want our way. Well, that's what we're doing, brothers and sisters, as a people. We are kicking and screaming to the Father that we want our own way. Uh, we want our own way as it pertains to culture. Uh, we want our own way as it pertains to skin color. We want our own way, brothers and sisters, as it pertains to finances. There are just a handful of people around the world that wants all the money to themselves. Uh, we want our way, brothers and sisters, as it pertains to violence. Uh, we still want an eye, amen, for an eye. Uh, but when we do wrong, brothers and sisters, we don't want, we want forgiveness. Amen. We want to swore to utilize against our enemy, uh, but when it comes to our own sins, we want forgiveness. Brothers and sisters, the Lord, the Most High, is calling his children back to him. He's calling his children back to him to reconcile with him. Amen. The word reconcile means to rebuild, to rebuild a relationship, to rekindle the flame, amen, to return back. Uh, now, this suggests that at one point we were with God. Uh, well, he, that, he, he says that, brothers and sisters. He says before we were formed in our mother's womb, he knew who we were. Amen. He wants to have a better life for us, a life that we can't even describe, a life that's incomprehensible for us. But how are we going to begin that process, brothers and sisters? Well, it starts, stops and ends with his son, Jesus Christ. Now, here he is speaking through the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. Now, the Corinthians were 
a part of the new church that was being built post resurrection of Jesus Christ. So Paul, a man on his uh, ascension to uh, spread the gospel throughout the land is establishing churches all around. And the Corinthians were just such as one. And they were known for all of their dutifulness, uh, all of their gifts. Amen. We're going to talk about the Colossians and how they were known for a spirit of love. Uh, but brothers and sisters, as Paul begins to talk about the spirits, the fruits of the spirits, the prophetic gifts, and all the other things that are happening here that he talks about in Corinthians, he uh, tells them to remind them that it all starts, amen, with God having your relationship back with him. So for we do not commend ourselves, verse 12, again to you, but give opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance. One of the reasons, brothers and sisters, one of the barriers for us to come back, to reconcile, to rebuild our relationship with God is something very simple. We have built ourselves first. We have placed ourselves. We have placed our agendas. We have placed our finances. We have placed our goals, our families. We have placed all of these things before God. Now, it is very difficult to reconcile uh, with the Father if we have things placed over him. How many of us have ever been in relationships? Relationships with whomever it is. It may have been a friendship, uh, but whatever it is, how did that relationship progress if you didn't make time for that other person? Uh, how many of you have been in a relationship with uh, a man, your career? Uh, how many of us would receive paychecks if we don't actually show up to the job and do the things that we have been contracted to do? Brothers and sisters, how many of us would remain in those relationships if that other person is not making time for you whatsoever? Well, brothers and sisters, the Lord is very clear on this. He tells us in the book of Matthew chapter six, amen, that you cannot serve two masters, amen. You're going to love one and then you're going to hate the other. And you're just not going to be able to do it. Now, I hear people say, well, brother John, I thought God did the impossible. So why would it be impossible uh, to go ahead and have your agenda? Brothers and sisters, yes, uh, he tells us very clearly. He made us, he created us in his own image and likeness and he is jealous over us. He wants us uh, to place him first. Uh, all of the things that we are after in this world did not create you. All of the things that we are after in this world cannot save you. When it is, brothers and sisters, we are in our 911 situations in our life, and Lord knows they are constantly happening in our families every single day, every single week. Who is it? What name is it that we call upon? Do we call upon the name of our wife? Do we call upon the name of the husbands or the children? Uh, do we call upon the name of J.P. Morgan Chase or the Bank of America? No, brothers and sisters, when we are in a death uh, situation, when we are in a situation where we need a man, a miracle, where we need a touch from the Lord, it is only the name of Jesus Christ that we call upon, uh, whether as a believer or a non-believer. Uh, there was a saying when I served in the military that there are no atheists in the foxholes. I mean, when those bullets start flying, uh, you see very clearly, amen, who is on the Lord's side and whom we know help is going to come from. But he tells us very clearly right here, we do not commend ourselves. So right away, Paul is telling everyone, we have to take ourselves down, amen. Before we even approach uh, the Most High, we're going to have to take our titles down. Now, uh, this is not casting aspersions because we have all done this. In fact, we continue to do this. Whenever we give a speech, whenever we give a presentation, amen, we will always, sometimes you'll hear people say, well, as a doctor or as an attorney or as a man or as a woman, uh, sometimes we'll put our racial preferences first. Well, brothers and sisters, when we come into the presence of the Most High, we do not commend ourselves, no matter what title you think you are. When we come into his presence, brothers and sisters, we are not men first. We are not women first. We are not doctors, we are not misters, we are not misses. None of those titles matter, brothers and sisters. We are servants. We are all servants of the Most High. Bless his holy name today. And then he says that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance. Now, as the word of God continues to teach all of us not to do this, Paul is letting them know there are going to be people, not simply outside the church, people inside the church that are continuing to boast about their appearance. They're going to continue to boast about their positionings, about their anointings about their spiritual gifts whatever it may be but he's telling him he's telling them you don't go after them the lord is going to deal with them he's trying to correct us from an individual basis this is what for us not to do amen we are not to act as they are doing we are not to commend ourselves nor boast in our appearance verse 13 for if we are beside ourselves 
it is for God. In other words, brothers and sisters, if we have been promoted, if he has given us gifts, if we have access to money or relationships or business partnerships, anything we have is for him. Amen. He has blessed us to be a blessing to someone else. He has not blessed us or exalted us to put us on a platform just for us to commend ourselves. Amen. Now, the word of God is true, brothers and sisters. He says he will humble the proud and exalt the humble. So the Lord wants us to be exalted, brothers and sisters. But it's very clear. He wants to know this morning, if he promotes you, will you promote him? If he markets you in this world that he created, will you turn around and market him? Or will you market yourself? Uh, will we market the name brand clothing that we love to wear? Will we market the institution that we work for? Who created the institutions, brothers and sisters? Think of the most expensive name brand clothing that you can. Who created that? Sure, we were vessels, uh, but it is the most high, brothers and sisters, that created the very jewel that we love in the jewelry store. Uh, it has been said, and researchers have backed this up. Diamonds, rubies, the most precious jewels on the planet, brothers and sisters. It takes millions of years for these uh, gemstones to form in the mountains. Now, who set forth this process, brothers and sisters? This is why they're so valuable to us, because there is not much of it, and it takes a very long time to build. Many of us love main brand clothing, main brand cars, main brand homes, whatever it is, because there's only a short supply of it. There's a scarcity, and it takes an exuberant amount of time to create it or to make it. Well, the Lord wants us to know today, all of those things that you value, who is it that created them? Who is it that created the mind, amen, to be able to put the plow to the ground to create those things? Should we worship the creation and not the creator? No, brothers and sisters, let it not be so. He says, for we do not condemn, amen, we do not commend ourselves, nor those who boast in appearance. Or if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us. Brothers and sisters, the word compel, amen, meaning to motivate, to encourage. It's the love of Christ that compels us to come back to him. Now, it's his love. It's not our love, brothers and sisters, meaning that there was a force at work in this world before we were born. Amen. There is a force at work in this world that's drawing us all to him. This is why sometimes we uh, want to know, Lord, how am I going to get my ministry off the ground? How am I going to market myself? Uh, do I have the right logo? Do I have the right title? He's telling us, don't worry about that. The love of Christ compels us. He says, if you lift me up, amen, if you lift me up, I will draw all men unto me. Uh, he created us, brothers and sisters. There is no better marketing strategy, amen, than lifting up the name of Jesus Christ because it is him, amen, whose love compels us. Because we judge thus, if one die for all, then all die. Brothers and sisters, he gave his life for each and every single one of us. Uh, we are upon the spirit of Christmas, the holiday of Christmas, brothers and sisters. And in essence, one aspect of it is that we worship uh, the birth of Jesus Christ into this world. But how many of us know that there is even a deeper meaning? Amen. There is an even deeper meaning, or deeper meaning than simply celebrating his birth. It's celebrating not only his birth, but his life, his death, and his resurrection, brothers and sisters, all into one. Uh, that is the essence of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the essence of the revelation of Jesus Christ. Uh, his birth his life, his death, and his resurrection, and brothers and sisters, his return. For he says, one died for all, amen, that, that those who live should live no longer for themselves. Brothers and sisters, he is letting us know that once we, amen, make this journey, once we start this relationship with him, remember, he has already started it with us, but he wants it to be reciprocated. He wants us to understand that we are no longer living for ourselves. Uh, so we can take down our titles, we can take down the marketing strategies. We can take down ourselves off the pedestal because we are no longer living for ourselves. If there was a title uh, that we could put on ourselves, yes, it would be that of servant, but it would be Jesus uh, because we are made in his image and likeness. And the Lord tells us he wants us to be like his son. So many times in society, uh, we will ask or people will ask us, who is it that you admire most in society? And we will say rightfully, OK, our parents. Right. Maybe there's someone else in society that you admire. Look, there's nothing wrong with that. But ultimately, brothers and sisters, the Lord has one model for us. Uh, there's one person ultimately that he wants all of us to model ourselves after. And that is his son, Jesus Christ. In other words, 
He wants us to be clones, brothers and sisters. He wants us to be just like his son when it pertains to love, as it pertains to sacrifice, and as it pertains to worship of the Most High. So if we're supposed to be like anybody. If we're supposed to be like anybody in this world, it is Jesus. Now he says, therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. We regard no one. Now, is he saying that we are not to respect one another in our positions that the Lord has placed us in? No, uh, he's not saying that the president of the United States comes to your school or your home that we don't respect the president. Now, he's not saying that uh, the pastors, the bishops, your school principals, your bosses, your supervisors, your managers. He's not telling us that we are not to respect uh, one another. In fact, he tells us to submit to the authority of the government. What he's talking about, brothers and sisters, is the flesh. He is talking about exalting one another because of who we are, because of what we are. None of us would be here, brothers and sisters, had the Most High not created us and placed us here to begin with. So he's telling us, do not worship one another. Amen. We regard no one according to the flesh. We are not to exalt one another so big, brothers and sisters, that we place uh, these individuals before God. This is one of the biggest issues that we see happening, not in the world. The world is the world. The Lord is interested in correcting his folks, the people, brothers and sisters, the church. Uh, he's very clear, amen, in the book of Peter. Judgment is coming first to the house. Uh, so he wants us to understand that the hierarchy starts and stops with him. Sometimes you'll look at the hierarchy. Uh, we uh, who went to college or they now teach this in school. It says that there's something called Abraham's hierarchy of needs, uh, where you have your uh, other ambitions sort of at the bottom, but at the top is our own self-actualization, our self-appointment, where we reach our own manifestation of our dreams and goals and desires. And sometimes as we were, as we're saved, brothers and sisters, we now enter into the church with that same mentality where we're looking for the hierarchy. Okay, we can understand God is at the top, but we're looking for ourselves somewhere in the bottom. Well, brothers and sisters, he tells us very clearly, uh, we are not to follow that hierarchy of needs. We are to follow, amen, his standards. He's telling us he is the first and the last. So we come in, brothers and sisters, as servants. So oftentimes we're trying to study the power dynamic. Amen, where do we come in? Where can we fit in? He's telling us we fit in, amen, as servants because we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Brothers and sisters, we should not be using language any longer for those, amen, who have relationships with the Lord. I am now living my own truth. I am now manifesting the things that I want in this world. The manifestation, brothers and sisters, that we should be speaking is the manifestations of Jesus Christ, the things that he wants manifested into our lives. Yes, speak things as if they were, uh, but we need to be in accordance with his will as best as we can. But too often times, brothers and sisters, we're saved. We want a new relationship with Jesus Christ, but we want to hold on to the old man. We want to hold on to our own ways. We want to hold on to our own designs. He is very clear. Amen. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new, brothers and sisters, all things, no matter how devastating a situation is his word tells us very clearly he will take the water and turn it into wine uh, no matter how decrepit your situation may be no matter how many years the judge has sentenced you to incarceration no matter how many years people have sentenced you to a life of destitute there are people right now continuously putting uh bad omens upon people telling them they will never be successful telling young children in school you will never succeed you will never be anything you will only be like your mother. You will be worse than your father. All of these sorts of things that are happening, brothers and sisters. Uh, and we, when we start to believe those things, yes, we'll manifest those things into our life. Not because those words had power, but because our faith in them gives them power. But he wants us uh, empowered today, brothers and sisters, with a new word. All things have become new. So no matter what people are still accusing you of, no matter what you are accusing you of, we now, brothers and sisters, have a chance at a new life. Now, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, this word, amen, reconciliation, a very powerful word. If we hearken back, brothers and sisters, to the book of Matthew, amen, he is administering word to the disciples because many of them and the people that they were following have issues. Uh, they were wondering, how is it, amen, how is it that we are going to prosper under this new teaching, under this new way? 
while still being under the authority of Rome, still being under the authority of the Jewish church, or in that particular time, uh, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. How were they going to uh, reconcile this entire situation? Well, brothers and sisters, the Lord wants us to know first, if any of us are having problems trying to love one another, if any of us are having problems with our finances, with our relationships, no matter what it is we're having problems with. I've, I've heard this a lot, uh, brothers and sisters, because it is a big concern. Well, Brother John, how can I love someone else when I don't love myself? Um, how can I love God when I don't love myself? Brothers and sisters, part of the reason why, amen, it's very difficult for us to untwine and uh, to reprogram our mind is because we have been programmed uh, that love is simply an emotion. That love is based on our appearance. That love, we can only love something that we're attracted to. Brothers and sisters, love, as the word of God lays out for us from God, is agape love. It is blue collar. It is dutiful, meaning it is an action word. It's not something simply an emotion that you have for someone else. That is a connotation of it. Amen. Our culture today uh, romanticizes all love. And if it, it has us believing that if we look at ourselves in the mirror and we're not uh, physically attracted to ourselves, if we look at other people and we're not physically attracted to them, then how can we love them? That is not the standard that God is putting forward, brothers and sisters. In fact, he tells us uh, that love, his love is not based on appearance. He picked a man, the kings of Israel, not based on appearance, with the exception of Saul. He picked Saul, brothers and sisters. Saul was the first king but because Saul was very tall, Saul was so tall that he towered over everyone. Amen. It is said, amen, in the book of Samuel, uh, that tall or Saul was the tallest person so that all the citizens of Israel would look up to him. Uh, whereas King David, brothers and sisters, did not have the same stature. Amen. Ruth uh, did not have the same stature uh, that you would see on television today, brothers and sisters. Mary, amen, the mother of Christ, did not have the same stature did not necessarily have the same appearance, did not definitely have the same ways if we go back uh, to many of the women or specifically Eve, brothers and sisters. The Lord is interested in us, not based on our appearance. So he is trying to teach us. Uh, and I say trying because sometimes we as a people, uh, that includes me, we brothers and sisters, he says, are a stiff necked people. Uh, that means we are a hard headed people. We want to understand the world with the way that we want to understand the world. He just told us in his text, we regard no one according to the flesh, brothers and sisters. There are those who based in their appearance, but he does not want us to be that way because we are not going to be able to come back to the Lord, reconcile with him if we're trying to reconcile appearance, if we're trying to reconcile race, if we're trying to reconcile gender. Brothers and sisters, we're going to have to get to the point where we put all of these things down when we enter the presence of the Most High. Reconciliation through Jesus Christ. And it says he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Now, it's interesting that he uses that term ministry, brothers and sisters, because this is something that he wants us to do with him on a daily reoccurring basis. Uh, many times, however, we have confused the process. Uh, we have confused the process of reconciliation with forgiveness. In the book of Matthew, chapter eight, uh, 18, brothers and sisters. Uh, Peter, amen, the disciple at that time asked Jesus, well, how many times, amen, should we forgive someone? And Jesus replies to him very, very clearly, 70 times seven, brothers and sisters. Uh, it has been interpreted to mean essentially infinity time. Just as much as the Lord has forgiven us, we, amen, have to forgive one another. But is the term forgiveness the same as reconciliation? No, they are not. They are two very different words, brothers and sisters. Yes, all throughout his words, specifically the New Testament, Jesus tells us to forgive. But he tells us very clearly also that reconciliation, meaning to rebuild relationships, that is not something he wants us focused on with one another uh, for all sorts of reasons. Number one, uh, we must seek him first. Amen. We oftentimes are trying to rebuild something that the Lord does not want rebuilt. Amen. Whatever offense that that person has caused you, our command from him, forgive and move on. Forgiving, brothers and sisters, breaks the chains. Amen. It breaks the chains, the stronghold over your mind. It breaks the chains and strongholds over your spirit that you have to carry that burden of guilt uh, or hatred. Amen. He wants that broken over our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why he says, forgive. Forgive them and keep forgiving them uh, because it breaks the chains over your life. But in terms of going to rebuild relationships, brothers and sisters, he's very clear. Amen. God was in Christ reconciling the world to him, 
not imputing their trespasses against them. Brothers and sisters, the only relationship, the most important relationship that we should be refocused on rebuilding is our relationship with Jesus Christ. All other things, brothers and sisters, will fall into place. Amen. Matthew, again, chapter six, I'll read it again because there are, sometimes we forget what he says very clearly. Matthew chapter six, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, not the forgiveness of other folks, uh, not what folks are trying to do for you, not the praise of other people, not the uh, adulteration of other people. No, seek him first and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So if you're having problems trying to love others, if you are having problems trying to love yourself, if you are having problems trying to reconcile with other people, well, first and foremost, reconcile with the Most High. Love the Most High. Spend time with the Most High. And how are we going to do that? Through his son, Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, that is the first and last relationship uh, that we are going to be concerned about. We entered into this world, amen, only to him, and we are going to exit out of this world, every single one of us, only to him. Now, are there other relationships in our life that are important? Of course there are. But if we seek him first, brothers and sisters, he is going to chart out a rubric or a curriculum for each of us to follow a step-by-step -step plan for all of our lives. Uh, many of us have ruined relationships with other people. We have. Many of us have completely annihilated any chance at hope at trying to rebuild something. Uh, there are some relationships that you do not want to rebuild. Amen. The Lord has delivered you and saved you from certain career fields, from certain individuals, from certain people, brothers and sisters. But whatever it is you're trying to do, if we are confused, if we're trying to figure out how can I love a group of people, uh, there are cultures of people, brothers and sisters, amen, that have been abused, amen, that have uh, dealt with discrimination, that have done, been dealt with things from, from generations to generations, brothers and sisters. But how do we deal with that? How are those people to reconcile those relationships with those individuals? Well, brothers and sisters, that's not what the command is. The command is for all brothers and sisters, all mankind to first return to the father. The father, amen, is going to give us our marching orders. The father is going to tell us who and how we should be uh, getting into relationship with, who and how we should be rebuilding our lives. But brothers and sisters, if we continue to place our own agenda first, if we continue to place our own love first, uh, then we are going to continue down, amen, this road of confusion, which is something the Lord does not want for us. And then he says, and has committed us to the word of reconciliation. Now that word is used five times from verse 12 to verse 21. Very rarely, brothers and sisters, do you read, amen, in the scriptures where you see a word being reutilized that many times in a short amount of time span. Five word, or five different times, brothers and sisters, the word reconciliation is utilized. The Lord, brothers and sisters, is pleading to us. He is pleading to us, as he says here, we are ambassadors. As the Lord, amen, we're pleading, amen, he is pleading. Uh, for those who are familiar, amen, with the legal system, when you file a motion to the court, a motion is a request, amen, a request to have the court do something or not to do something. Uh, if you file a motion to compel, you are compelling the other party, whether it's the prosecutor or the defense attorney, to turn over specific documents. Uh, if you are filing a motion for an injunction, and you are filing something to shut down a man of business, to shut down an operation. Uh, if you're trying to file a motion to dismiss, that means you want the entire case dismissed. Oftentimes, on those documents, brothers and sisters, whatever our requests are, are often called pleadings. Pleading, brothers and sisters, just as the word says, is where we are uh, We are begging, amen. We are begging the court. We are trying to get across to the judge, judge, I need you to do this. Well, brothers and sisters, there is not many times in his word where you see the father, father of lights, brothers and sisters, the father of all creation and existence, pleading. He is pleading, brothers and sisters. This is not something that you see a man from uh, the king. This is not something that you see, brothers and sisters, from the Lord, unless he truly loves us, brothers and sisters. Uh, the father is not pleading with anyone, but he says he is pleading with us to turn back to him. So he wants us, brothers and sisters, to turn back. He doesn't have to. Amen. Remember, all of this is optional. He doesn't have to do any of these things, but he is pleading, brothers and sisters, through his ambassadors for all of us to return back. Uh, because many people will say, well, uh, no, I don't believe in all of that heaven stuff. I don't believe in all of the Bible stuff. I'll just take life as it is. 
They do not know what they're saying, brothers and sisters. They have no idea, amen, what they're saying. But the enemy does, amen. The enemy knows exactly what he is doing because guess what? He, along with the third, were actually up in heaven. So they know exactly how beautiful it is. In fact, uh, the word of God is very clear. The only war that the devil was fighting was the war for heaven. That's what he wanted. He doesn't care about the earth. He, the, him and his uh, demons don't care about this place, brothers and sisters. This is why they offer it to us. Uh, he offers this to us on a daily basis. If, just as he offered to Christ, if you bow down to him, he will give you the riches of his world. Brothers and sisters, these are not the riches, amen, that we are after. Christ very clearly tells us, uh, be not after things that rot, where thieves break in and moths destroy, but be after. Store up for yourselves treasures that are in heaven. Brothers and sisters, there is a whole new life, amen, a whole new world that is waiting for us, but we are only going to get there through reconciling first with Jesus Christ. Now it says, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. An ambassador is a dignitary, uh, a very important person, uh, meant to be a spokesperson uh, here in this country and our countries around the world. Every country has ambassadors. They have statesmen, stateswomen, where they go around and they are representatives on behalf of their country. Uh, where they are there to make requests, uh, to make business deals, to make uh, trade deals and such on and so forth. Uh, either way, they are putting forth their agenda on behalf of the country. Brothers and sisters, we are representatives. Amen. We are representatives of the kingdom of heaven. Does that mean we are perfect? Of course not. Absolutely not. But it means nonetheless, he is still using us to get across that we all need to be reconciled. Then he says, we implore you, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Amen. The first relationship, brothers and sisters, that we must rebuild is our relationship with God. It's not with anyone else. Amen. Many of us are in destructive relationships, destructive friendships, destructive workships with the people at our jobs. We are trying to mend the fences. We are trying to turn back the clock, jump back into the time machine, go back in time uh, to rekindle the flame. Brothers and sisters, the only flame, amen, that we need to really truly be concerned about, it says, is Almighty God, because he says our Lord uh, is an all-consuming fire, brothers and sisters. So let us go back to him first, and then he will begin to show us how we are to carry forth his commandments. Remember, commandment in the garden. And yes, it's appropriate to say we, because Adam and Eve, amen, are one. Uh, many people will try to turn this into a gender issue, one against the other. But we failed, brothers and sisters, excuse me, we failed in the garden. We failed together. Then he gave us 10 commandments. Brothers and sisters, we have no need to point fingers uh, at the Hebrew children who were worshiping golden calves because we're still doing it today. So we did not keep the first commandment, not to eat of the fruit of the forbidden tree. Then we broke the 10 commandments. Then the Lord said, I will finally give you the Mosaic Code. I will give you many laws through the, uh, the Levitical Code or the book of Leviticus, the book of Numbers, and Deuteronomy for you to obey and for you to follow. We then could not keep those commandments, brothers and sisters, because all throughout, amen, the book of Judges, uh, throughout all the rest of the Old Testament, there was always a back and forth with the people breaking the law, not following the commandments of the Lord. And then, brothers and sisters, he said, OK, fine, I'm going to send you my son. And he is going to give you a new command, two new commands. First, to love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul, and then to love your neighbor as yourself. Notice the two words that are the same in both commandments, to love, the word love. Now, many of us, brothers and sisters, again, Brother John, how can I love anybody if I don't love myself? Brothers and sisters, where is it written where it says we first have to place ourselves first in anything, including love? You are not going to be able to understand to love yourself because we are not going to. We, brothers and sisters, come, amen, with a, with a set of instructions. That instructions is the word of God. We first have to learn to love the creator. How many times we will walk into a museum and we are we're just programmed this way. We'll look at a beautiful painting. We love the painting, but we know nothing of the person who created it. Well, we look at this beautiful dish that was prepared, amen, by the chef. We admire the dish because it looks delicious and it tastes delicious. But do we know anything about the chef? Uh, we will admire a sporting event on television uh, between two teams trying to score touchdowns or baskets. Uh, we see this and we admire the sport. But do we really understand anything about the athletes and their lives and things that they went through? We're programmed, brothers and sisters, to appreciate the product, the car that you drive every day uh, to work. 
uh, the house that you have, brothers and sisters. We appreciate the product, but not the producer. Well, the Lord is calling us to, uh, today, brothers and sisters. He's saying, I am going to reprogram your mindset. You are not going to be able to love yourself first until you first learn to love me. I will show you how to love yourself. I will show you how to love your neighbor as yourself. I will show you how to worship me. I will show you how to serve me. We do not come first, brothers and sisters. You're not going to be able to love uh, yourself like you think you are. Some of us are in love with our parents. Uh, we believe that we have been blessed with certain aspects. Some of us are in love with our intelligence. Uh, some of us are in love with, with our ability to make money. Some of us are in love with the ability that uh, we have in relationships. Many have many concubines or whatever it may be. Brothers and sisters, every single one of us has flaws. Every single one of us, brothers and sisters, has issues that we need to return to the most high on. Now, some of us may not like our appearance. Some of us may not like the relationships. We may not like our bank accounts. We may not love our careers. So that love, brothers and sisters, that we're trying to place first, amen, is not going to work out with the Lord because he wants us to understand we have the priority confused. Amen. We have the chain of operations confused. Uh, we do not start first by loving us ourselves nor anything in this world. He says very clearly in his word, love not the world nor the things of the world. For those who love the world, the love of the Father is not in them. Well, last I checked, brothers and sisters, we as human beings are in this world. So if we're trying to place love for ourselves first, love for our culture first, love for our race first, love for women first, love for men first, love for money first, we are not going to be able to have true reconciliation with God because he's reminding us the whole purpose of reconciliation, the whole purpose of of rebuilding our relationship with him is to put him first. We must learn to love him first. So when we hear the enemy whisper in our ear, when we uh, whisper in our own ears, how can I love anyone if I don't love myself? Brothers and sisters, there is no nothing on this earth, amen, that started with the love uh, between a man and a woman, much less the love between himself. Our love, brothers and sisters, leads to destruction. Our love for ourselves leads to robbery in the household. Our love for our culture leads to wars, religious wars, cultural wars, racial wars, gender wars. That's what our love does, brothers and sisters. If we want to see the end result for the love of mankind, turn on the news. If we want to see a result for the love of mankind, let's go visit our local areas of incarceration. If we want to see the levels of love for mankind, all we have to do is look at the next time someone is accused of something. Uh, I hear this again all the time. Our system is corrupt. Our criminal justice system is corrupt. Our political systems are corrupt. Educational systems are corrupt. And yes, that's correct. They are corrupt. But where did all that start? Well, the next time someone is accused of something publicly, go to the court of public opinion. Watch how many people will absolutely condemn that man or that woman without any evidence whatsoever. And now that same level of condemnation, brothers and sisters, has transferred into the system that we built, that we elect officials to. And then we wonder why our systems are corrupt, because we are corrupt, brothers and sisters. Uh, the word of God says that the church rejected Jesus. The book of Isaiah says very clearly, brothers and sisters, he was rejected and despised. Amen. He came to seek and to save, but he was rejected by his own people, brothers and sisters. He was thrown out, literally cast out. Uh, of the synagogues, the places that he, amen, his house, uh, the house of the father, he was cast out of those places as he was trying to bring the good news. Now think about this. This is someone who came to heal. This is someone who gave sight to the blind. This is someone who cast out unclean spirits. This is someone who uh, gave the ability to walk, brothers and sisters, to people that were lame from birth. They took him and cast him out of the church. Brothers and sisters, why were they doing this? Why were the people of Israel doing these things? Well, let's go to what the term Israel means. Israel means, brothers and sisters, struggles with God, one who struggles with God. We have been at war, not just with one another. We have been at war, brothers and sisters, since the beginning of time with the Lord, because we, as mankind, we want our own way. We want our own way. We want to love our own way. We want to prioritize. We want to prosper. Uh, we want the world to work as what we want it to work. But if we turn back a few chapters, brothers and sisters, it doesn't say anything about man creating anything down here. It is the most high that created the heavens and the earth. He knows how this product is supposed to work. He knows, brothers and sisters, how this 
operation is supposed to come forward. So we are not going to be able to operate fully, amen, until we learn first to return back to him and place him first. Verse 21, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So this is what the end game is, brothers and sisters. As we turn back to the father, reconcile to him through his son, Jesus Christ, he, a man, wants us to become the righteousness of God in him. Some of us may remember the term righteousness used uh, as one of the uh, pieces of armor mentioned in the book of Ephesians. Amen. One of the pieces of the armor of God, the breastplate, it says for us to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Well, what does the term righteousness really mean? The term righteousness, brothers and sisters, means God's standards, God's standard holiness, his ways for how we are to be living. But the problem is, brothers and sisters, we don't want his standard of living. We don't want his level of discipline. And I'm not going to sit here and say that when the Lord corrects you, it always feels great. It does not. But the Bible says that the wise, amen, will not despise correction from the Most High, that he is calling us back to him, amen, so that we can be, so that we might. Remember, he uses this, this superlative might because many of us, brothers and sisters, inside the church, again, we're not pointing fingers at anybody outside in the world. The people inside the church still sometimes we want to live our own truth. We want to have our own form of religion, our own form of our own form of righteousness, one in which is very hypocritical. Amen. But he says that so that we might become the righteousness of God. Amen. In him, brothers and sisters, this is what he wants the end game to be for us. He wants us to be. Yes. Clones. Amen. Just as Jesus, he wants us to be like him. He made us in his image and likeness. So we're made in his image of likeness. He wants us to function in his image of likeness. Uh, many times you'll see parents uh, will uh, we get uh, get all beside themselves when they uh, see their children because they look like them. And man, they're sort of miniature versions of themselves. Uh, but oftentimes you'll hear from parents uh, that the one problem, amen, with their children is they don't act like them. Uh, but sometimes they do, brothers and sisters. So what they try to do is spend the rest of their lives trying to mold them to act like they act at the current age that they are, even though when they were that age, they too didn't act the same way. Uh, but just as a man, parents are trying to train their children to be better versions of themselves. How much more, brothers and sisters, that the, does the Lord, the most high, look down upon this earth? He looks down upon this earth, brothers and sisters, to want all of us to be a man like him. He's telling us, I made you in my image of likeness, image and likeness, and I want you to function just as I function in my image and likeness. Now, if we turn to the book of Colossians, brothers and sisters, here he is going to reemphasize, amen, this whole process. Now, the Colossians were a group of people similar to the Corinthians. Uh, they were building a new church. They were establishing themselves in the church community. They were known, believe it or not, for love. They were known for a spirit of service. Now, when we see the word love, we, again, automatically affiliate that with emotion or with romance. Uh, but the word of God has a different connotation of it. First, coming from the father uh, that he sacrificed, he gave his only begotten son, that he gives us a man love every single day. But he says right here in verse 19, for it pleased the father that in him all fullness should dwell and by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Now, it's very interesting that he put all things, whether on earth or things in heaven. This, again, harkens back to Revelations where it talks about the war that was in heaven, brothers and sisters. And the Lord's will was done in heaven. The enemy, the dragon was cast down, amen, with the evil ones with them. And he said his will was done in heaven and is going to be also done on earth. So there's going to be another casting down, brothers and sisters, of those who refuse to get on board with the reconciliation process. And he says to reconcile all things, amen, to himself by him, whether things on earth or in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Brothers and sisters, we can put the Lord our God first. Is it an easy process? No. Is it something that will take the rest of our lives to do? Yes. Uh, we're going to get better at it each and every single day. We just have to be determined to stay focused, amen, on the path that he has called each and one of us to do. Now, this whole subject of loving God, brothers and sisters, this whole subject of trying to love ourselves first. Uh, to those who are still on the fence in this matter, 
Brother John, I don't know how to love myself. I don't love myself. Uh, well, brother, I actually disagree with you. Uh, you do love yourself. Uh, did you feed yourself this morning? Uh, did you wake up this morning and make or buy or purchase yourself something to eat to put inside your body? Did you clothe yourself this morning? Did you wake up naked? There are many people who are waking up in this world naked. But did you? Did you wake up naked with no clothing to put on your body? If you fed yourself this morning, brothers and sisters, you showed love to yourself. If you clothe yourself, you love yourself. How many of you woke up in a warm bed today? Amen. How many of you woke up with air conditioning running in your apartment or your home or your condo? Uh, how many of you have a nice vehicle to drive in uh, back and forth? Brothers and sisters, if you have purchased yourself these things, if you feed yourself on a regular basis, if you clothe yourself on a regular basis, if you have medication to take and you take that medication on a regular basis, I say to you, you absolutely love yourself because love, brothers and sisters, is not something simply based on your appearance. This is one of the deceptions of this world. Hey, Amen. If you you can only love yourself if you love your appearance. You weren't thinking to yourself this morning when you ate. I'm not going to feed myself because I don't love myself. Brothers and sisters, love is an action word. Amen. Love is a dutiful word. Love is blue collar. Uh, the most high loves us uh, because he He tells us, I feed you every single day. Uh, there is not a sparrow, brothers and sisters. The word of God says there is not a sparrow that falls to the ground that he does not have knowledge of. And how much more is he going to care for the birds of the air and the sparrows and he is going to care for us his own children. Nothing else he created in his image and likeness except us. Uh, so we show ourselves love on a regular basis, whether we acknowledge it or not. We have to acknowledge he shows us love. How many near accidents, brothers and sisters, many of us could have been in. Many times we are lamenting a man, many of our loved ones who are no longer here. But how many of us realize all of us, every single one of us probably should have been gone in years of life. We're not here because of anything that we've done, brothers and sisters. We are not here because we were so good and righteous. We are only here, brothers and sisters, because of his grace, his love, and his mercy for each and every single one of us. Every day we are alive and we have breath. Every day, brothers and sisters, we have clothing to put on our body, a house or an apartment, something to keep us from the elements. It may not be a five full course meal that you eat every day. Uh, many days I continue to survive off ramen noodles, brothers and sisters, uh, and grits. But you know what? There are millions of people around the world that do not have that. So he wants us to give thanks for the little things. And when we realize we actually do love ourselves, we love ourselves every single day. Uh, you may not be all enthralled with your appearance. You may not be all enthralled with the type of house that you have. You may not be all that enthralled with the job that you have. But if you have any of those things at any level, brothers and sisters, and you continue to employ those things every day, you are showing love to one another and to yourself. And just as we are doing that, that's what he ultimately wants us to do for one another. Loving one another, brothers and sisters, is not about being in love with our parents. Loving one another is a service. It is a, a method of blue collar commitment, brothers and sisters, just as he does to us. Uh, bless his holy name today. So if we still don't understand this, brothers and sisters, it's only going to begin to start coming clear by placing him first. Reconcile first with the most high. Don't focus on trying to rebuild all these relationships, many of which the Lord does not want rebuilt. Remember, he tell, He calls us out. He calls us to be come out from among them. So there are some relationships and friendships that we are not going to rebuild. Uh, but at the end of the day, the one and only thing that he wants us to focus on first is him because we cannot serve two masters. So brothers and sisters, uh, we continue to pray, amen, for all of you today. Thank you for joining us today for Revelation New Ministries, the word of God today. Let us uh, continue to reconcile with Jesus Christ. Uh, and if you don't know what that process is, you can start it today just by believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth that Jesus Christ is, is the son of God, amen, that he lived, he died for the forgiveness of all of our sins, he rose again to sit at the right hand of the Father, and he is going to return, brothers and sisters. Uh, if we, if this, amen, were a movie we were watching, it would say to be continued. Uh, there is no end credits to this movie, brothers and sisters. Uh, the Lord is on his way back, amen. He is on his way back for those who are worshiping him in spirit and in truth. And you can start that process today by believing and confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord. And for those of us uh, and I constantly speak about this for those of us who have relationships with Christ, uh, for those of us who are already in, amen, his spiritual educational system. 
Let us go to the next level. Amen. Let us not be held back. Amen. And great. Let us continue to advance in our understanding uh, that we don't have to go back, brothers and sisters, and try to rebuild things that the Lord has torn down. Oftentimes, relationships were ruined back in the days. We don't realize the Lord was in the middle of it. Amen. And there were certain things that he, amen, canceled out of our life because he is in the process of deliverance and setting all the captives free. Uh, so we today, brothers and sisters, are going to move forward as believers. Amen. Placing him first, placing his relationship first, which means loving him first, loving to appreciate what he does for us on a regular basis. And then brothers and sisters, all these other things shall be added unto you. He's going to teach you. He's going to teach us how to love ourselves. He's going to teach us uh, how to love each other. He's going to teach us how to forgive. And man, he, he's going to teach us to how to reconcile with the ones who he called us to reconcile with. Uh, but before we even get to that level, brothers and sisters, we got to first reconcile with him. Him alone, bless his holy name today. So thank you all of you for joining me for the word of God today. Uh, I pray, amen, the uh, coverings and peace of the Lord over every single one of you, no matter where you are. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you today, Heavenly Father, to tell you thank you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this word, this powerful word that you continuously impart into us each and every single day. We pray that this word grow roots, Heavenly Father, grow roots deep into our spirit so that we can go forth to be the children that you called us all to be, uh, which is to seek you first, and your kingdom, Lord, and all these other things that we are after in this world, all of these other things that we are concerned about shall then be added unto us, uh, because then we'll understand how to handle them, Heavenly Father, because we are reconciling with you. Amen, our Lord and Savior. Bless your holy name today. And we pray today, Heavenly Father, that your Holy Spirit, amen, come upon each and every single household, every person that is in attendance right now, wherever they are around this world. We pray amen, for your protection. We pray, Heavenly Father, amen, for your glory to continue to enshrine us as we continue to learn and grow day by day. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you, amen. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule, out of this morning, where you could have joined any other service, amen, but you joined us here this morning. We pray, amen, peace, blessings, and protection over each and every single one of you this day and this week. Uh, please continue to join us every week, amen, on Revelation Ministries on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. for prayer, Thursday nights at 8 p.m. for Bible study, and 11.30 a.m. for the morning service word of God. If you have any prayer requests whatsoever, perhaps someone is sick in your family, perhaps someone needs deliverance, please, you can submit the information to Revelation of Warfare Ministries at Yahoo.com. That's Revelation of Warfare Ministries at Yahoo.com. Just a generalized description of the situation is all you need. You don't have to place any names, no special contact information, nothing of that nature, brothers and sisters. And we will get everything submitted up as we do on a weekly basis. Bless his holy name today. And please visit us on our YouTube channel at Revelation of Warfare Ministries on YouTube for additional word of God and biblical content. Brothers and sisters, I am Minister John Pickens with Revelation of Ministries. Thank you to each of you for joining me today. Have a very blessed day and a blessed rest of the week.